Tiffany of Tip Stitch, and even though I live in Georgia where the governor is slowly opening up the state, I will continue to shelter in place for the next two or three weeks. Thankfully, I have a nine to five job that allows me to work from home and I hope to continue to do that. In the meanwhile, I will also be staying home and sewing. So I wanted to show you a few projects that I'd like to get done in the next two or three weeks. I doubt I'll get all of them done, but I just wanna show you what's coming up along in my queue as we are all probably spending a little bit more time at home than usual. So let's jump right into the projects. I want to start with the project that I think I'm most excited about because it's something I've never sewn before and a fabric that I've never worked with before. And if you guys are familiar with me, you know that I keep my projects typically like this in a two gallon plastic Ziploc bag. Uh, I'll put the fabric, the pattern, any notions like a zipper or buttons or whatever that I know that I'm going to use for that particular project. This one doesn't have any closures, so it's just the fabric and the pattern here. And this is a simple raincoat that was released by Simplicity maybe last year or so. Um, this one has tons of reviews. I've seen it everywhere, Instagram, pattern review. You can do a Google search. And I think that's because it's a simple unlined jacket that is a trench style for like a, in my opinion, this perfect for a raincoat. And I'm gonna be combining a few of the views here. I love the length of view A, this front one here in the green. Uh, the longer length with the side slits. I think that's a very classic length for like a rain jacket. Um, but I want to add the details like the flaps. I don't know what they're called. Like the front flaps here and here on views B and C. I also think I want to add the tie cuffs. Although I do really like this like slouchy sort of look here. We'll see. I think I'm going to go ahead and make the tie cuffs. And I want to add I think the front pockets but I might stick with the inseam like they have here on A. We'll see how that turns out. Either way, I think this is a super cute jacket. It should be a really quick sew, but of course I'm gonna make it more difficult by merging all these views. And I wanna add a back flap. That doesn't, it's not here on the thing, but I'm hoping that I can modify the back piece to make that like sort of Z, you know, back flap with the button that you see on a lot of trench coats. Um, if I have enough fabric to do so, I'll be doing that. And here is the fabric that I want to use. It is a rain jacketing fabric that I got from Minerva.com. And it's gorgeous because it's double faced. It has this bright fuchsia on the inside and then this very vivid deep tomato red on the other side. This is not a color combination I tend to be drawn to. I like blues and greens, oranges and yellows, but for some reason pinks and reds have just never been my thing. Um, but it seemed really fun and really perfect for a rain jacket because I love having bright vivid colors on like a rainy dreary day. So I'm really excited about working with this fabric. It's a nylon. It's incredibly like thin and lightweight. It's like amazing that it's double faced. Um, usually double faced fabrics or double sided fabrics are heavier and thicker. Not even sure how this is bonded together, but it's gorgeous. I love both colors. Um, so I might play a little bit with color blocking. I might make the, the jacket's gonna be red, but I might make like the belt, the pockets, and the flat pink. Um, or I may just keep everything red and let the pink be the flap, uh, be the fun pop of color on the inside is like the lining even though this is an unlined jacket it'll look totally different because of the double face of the fabric so i'm really excited i've never worked with rain uh jacketing fabric before and i've never made any type of trench or rain coat so i'm excited about that another one that i have from minerva fabrics is this corn is what they call it it's like a mustard yellow uh, crepe knit this feels a lot like a liverpool knit if you work with the liverpool double knit it is sort of medium to heavy uh, weight. It's very smooth on the inside, like a, uh, oops, on the inside, like a ponty, but it has this crepe texture on the other side. Um, I really like the color. It is a bit heavier than I would have liked because I wanted to make a dress out of it, and I think this might be a little too heavy for a dress, but I am going to attempt to make this jumpsuit. I like view B here that has the little flutter sleeves, the pockets, and the slim tapered pants. Um, I think that'll be a cute like spring-like thing to wear. Uh, because this is heavier, it might be too heavy for like the heat, heat of summer because I live in the south. But um, I think it'll be really cute if I can get it done and we can actually go outside before spring is totally over. 
Next up, I have another crepe-like fabric, but this one is more like a stretch woven. It does have stretch, but not nearly as much stretch as this. See, this is really more like a, a Liverpool knit. It stretches uh, two ways uh, in both directions. And this one does have a smidge of stretch, but it definitely isn't a stretch fabric. It's more like a stretch woven. And this I think is called a kiwi green. I think that it is also a really pretty color. I like greens, bright greens, muted greens. Green sort of in this family sort of appealed to me. And I love these amazing fit pants. So I'm going to be making these but in the view C which is the crop length just because I think that this bright color seems to be a more like spring or early fall type of color. Um, so I think the cropped will work well for that. I've made these before in a wool in the full leg long and I love it. You can see it on the blog. Um, I love these amazing fit pants. Um, they really guide you through fitting for pants, which is tricky for most people. And I actually was able to cut a straight size 18 and they fit perfectly. Um, there's a one inch seam allowance in these patterns. So it gives you some room to play and they give you a lot of direction as far as like how to fit. They also construct it in a way so that they're easier to fit once you get to the point that you can try them on. So I really love these patterns. The next one is from some fabric that keeps on giving. <laughs> I grabbed this fabric from Fabric Mart years ago. And let me see if I can get this smaller piece out. It was when they were having a fabric remnant sale, which was they were selling like three, four, five yard pieces of fabrics for a flat price. I think I probably paid like 10 or $12 um, for I think a five yard piece of this. And this is a poly spandex or like a rayon poly spandex um, blend. I actually cut this out to be the lining for another one of these that I made. I made uh, the romper version, which is three, four, and seven here and a double brush poly and it called for a lining. So I actually cut this out to be the lining. And once I looked at the instructions and saw what they wanted me to do, I didn't feel like this needed a lining. They were basically having you do that so that you could create an elastic casing here at the neck. And I just didn't feel like that was necessary. It's just a drapey neck that hangs off your shoulder. If it stretches with time, so be it. So um, this was actually the piece that I cut to be the lining. And when I put it together, it was so darn cute. I said, it needs to be its own thing. So for this one, I'm going to use the same top, obviously, because I had already cut it, but I'm going to do either the full leg or the harem like tapered leg. And it's the same pattern piece. So I just went ahead and cut out the longer piece, which is the uh, six here. But if you cut off a few inches and add the elastic, you get five here. So I just went with the longer one. If I don't like it, I'll make them the harem. Hopefully I'll like that. If I don't like that, I'll cut it to the shorts. But I think that I'll probably like one of the pants versions. So this fabric was a great deal. It may be like a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars a yard. Um, I've already made a dress out of this fabric. You can see it on the blog. It is a McCall's dress, although off the top of my head, I don't remember the number. So yeah, I typically bag things up sort of like that. When I cut that, I realized that I had enough remnants left to make something else. Small, of course. So I decided on this Betty romper and that's by uh, Made for Mermaids. And I saw this on, the, on Instagram. It was pumped a lot by all the testers and it was so stinking cute. And since we are sheltering in place and staying home, I need more things to just sort of lay around the house in, you know, but also be comfortable and cute. And I thought that this was adorable. I've already cut this out and made it out of a satin crepe like fabric um, without the lace, even though this does call for a knit fabric. Yeah, comfy knit. But it was, I just made it like a side larger and let it be a little bit more blousy and it turned out pretty cute. But I'm actually excited to do it in a knit since a knit is what uh, is called for. So I had enough scraps of the polka dot fabric to make this. I'm probably going to omit the lace again and use fold over elastic for the straps, but we'll see when I actually get to the construction of it. And again, I said this is the fabric that keeps on giving. So what I did here was, was use the itty bitty scraps that were left to cut out this uh, bralette and panties. And that's because I've been saying and saying and saying that I'm going to 
sell more uh, undergarments because we all know that they're so overpriced based on the small amount of material or fabric that's needed to make these, especially underwear. Um, however, I haven't quite grasp my mind around cup sizes and underwires and hooks and straps and all of that. So this is just a really simple pullover bralette and a really simple panty. So this is, a, I think, a good start into working with that. And I was able to cut out all the pieces um, out of the scraps of the scraps. So another project that I want to get done is this McCall 6752. I've made it before. Um, I've made this view. I really don't like this dolman sleeve view. I think I made it once and it was hideous. So I do really like the cross, cross wrap because I love anything that does a wrap with the simple skirt. Um, I've made this before with a different skirt and it's now my sister's because she took it. I mean, it was a little too small, but that's not the point. She wanted it, she bugged me about it, so I finally let her have it. So I have this um, muted like army green color here uh knit it's just like a i don't know i think it's like a polyester uh spandex kind of blend really smooth nice hand it feels sort of like an ity but more not as satiny but then not as brushed it's like a double brush poly it's just a nice jersey poly jersey i guess and i have probably about like one and a half yards of this which is probably just enough to make this dress so I thought that would be a good match and just a cute summer dress again to throw on when you're hanging around the house since I'm not leaving the house for the next couple of weeks. And that'll be a quick sew that'll give me some quick satisfaction. I also plan on making these pants. They're Mimi G pants. I love Mimi G's patterns for the most part and I really love almost all of her pants. So these are crop pants that I've made before. Um, I really love them. I made them out of more of an olive green linen several years ago and they are now too small as I have gained weight. So I plan on making them again but this time in this striped linen from Joann's a couple of years back. This has been in this bag since last summer for sure because that's when I decided I was going to make it. Um, and I really like this linen. It's like a black and white sort of heathered you know mixture here with the bold white stripes. So I think the vertical stripes will be a nice play with the crop pants. And this was a really straightforward, simple sew, if I remember correctly, from when I made it the first time. Um, and they turned out really cute and I wore them to death. They're just too small now. And last but not least, this also has been cut out since last year. It is the navy gingham fabric remnants that I used for my uh, color block not color block, my like mini navy and white collection I made last summer. I made a Mimi top and skirt. I made a new look top and I made some really cute McCall shorts. You can see it on the blog if you search navy or gingham. It was a super cute four piece little mini collection for the summer. Um, and I had enough fabric left to cut out one of these. I can't remember if I cut out D or C. I'm pretty sure it was C because this would have taken more fabric. But again, this was last summer. Um, so I just really thought this cute little twist detail was adorable. A lot of people made this dress last summer. They were all cute. Um, I think the gingham works really well with the tie detail because I think any directional fabric like the stripe or the plaid really accentuates the knot on the front, the little twist. And I know that some people have said twist on different patterns have been tricky. So I know that Brittany J. Jones has a video uh, doing the knot here because she has a sew along video for this pattern and if I get tripped up I'm definitely going to be checking out her video. I might just go ahead and watch it before I start sewing these pieces together so I know what to expect. But that's pretty much what I'd like to make over the next couple of weeks. Not sure at all that I can make all of these. Um, I am still working from home so I don't have all the free time. The kids are still doing their school from home, so my days aren't completely mine, but hopefully I'll have some extra time to de-stress and work on things like this that are fun. So I'm looking forward to making the gingham dress because this has been a long time coming. The crop pants have been a long time coming. Um, this cute little knit dress is going to be one of those fun instant, gr instant gratification sews, hopefully. Um, I've already made the Betsy romper, so I know that I'm going to like it. 
I've been wanting to make lingerie for forever, so getting into the underwear and bralettes will be fun. I've already made this romper, so I know I'm gonna love the jumpsuit. And these are the Minerva projects that I have coming down the pipeline um, that'll be on their blog probably this summer. So I love a jumpsuit as much as a dress, you guys know. And I love this kiwi green for these pants that are probably my favorite pants pattern ever. Probably, don't hold me to that. And I also am really excited about this double-faced red um, raincoat. So that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine projects. I'll probably get half of these done, but it's an ambitious goal and I like to set those. So thank you for checking my video out and you'll be seeing hopefully all of this very soon on the blog. Bye-bye.